Music is, is it's like breathing. Simple shit. That day, it was every day they kept on wanting to hear our shit dog. He said, I got tired of hearing y'all shit. He said, I ain't even realize y'all shit roll like that. He said, until I heard all the songs back to back, he said, I was like, oh shit. He said, <laughs> he said, I didn't, he said, I didn't even really, he said, I didn't really know that they was dope like that. So he said, uh, it surprised me too. He said, them niggas feeling y'all, man. He said, y'all niggas are out of here or something, so. He said, sure, he said, he gonna make sure ain't nothing, there ain't nothing wrong with y'all niggas, son. He gonna push the shit out of y'all. <laughs> 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 oh my God. <laughs> Hey, what is going on with y'all, man? I am happy to be back with another video. A video that I feel is one of those videos, you know, that we didn't know that we was waiting on. Like, we, we didn't know we needed this video, but we need this video. And y'all know it never stops. This stuff we here to expose, that we're here to bring to the light, it never stops. We always got more and more and more and more. And yet again, we have another case to talk about and expose. Bring the truth out about Static Major, the producer, songwriter, hit maker of the 90s and early 2000s and of a lot of songs and albums that you never knew that he was behind. Most people became aware of Static Major when he co-wrote Lil Wayne's probably one of his biggest hits, you know, as far as commercial success. You know, when all the rap started with Auto-Tune, you know, when him and 50 was competing who could make the biggest hit off of Auto-Tune back in um, 2007, 2008, he co-wrote the song Lollipop. I think he might have produced that song as well. Did he produce that song? I can't remember if he was on the production or not. So so most people became aware of Static Major when things, you know, when his name was on something that was really, really mainstream. A lot of the stuff that he was behind the scenes on, produced and co-wrote back in the 90s, his name wasn't actually on it. You know, like you would have to really know the industry or be looking at credits to see that he wrote a lot of your favorite hits from your favorite R&B artists back in the 90s. Basically, the dude was like a, you know, a music genius. Um, his work was amazing. His beats were amazing. His songwriting skills were at the top of the industry. Um, he was a go-to guy for a lot of artists, and we're going to get into that. For the people that aren't really aware of who Static Major was, you know, I got a pretty good article to read that just kind of gives you the background of artists that he worked with. So we can get to know Static Major a little bit more before we actually go into his death and what we think really happened to him. I'm going to go into reading this article in the next section of this video. So check this out. Louisville R&B star Stephen Garrett was laid to rest today, known in the music industry as Static. Garrett died Monday from complications from a medical procedure. He was only 33 years old. He was only 33 years old. So today, the local and national music community said farewell. And WHAS 11's Kelsey Starks was there. 
A gold casket now holds the body of Stephen Static Garrett. His private funeral held hundreds. There was standing room only in the sanctuary for friends, family, and others who knew him best. He, he wasn't the type of guy that lost fanfare. So, you know, I think he went the way that he would like for him. He wasn't a flash person. You know, he was just laid back, everyday person. You know, you would have never thought he was who he was. And if you didn't know his stage name, Static Major, you had likely heard his music. He was in the R&B group Playa in the early 90s, but grew to be an accomplished songwriter, penning hits for Aaliyah, the band Genuine, and Timbaland. He also worked with Missy Elliott and the band Jodeci. I don't think Louisville realized exactly who they had in their backyard, and then when they go back to look at Steve's life and, and they'll be like, oh, he did that song? He did that song? I didn't know he did that song. R&B singer Tank was one music celebrity at the funeral that reportedly held many more. The procession of about a hundred cars came through the West End, passing right here through Victory Park, a place that was special to Steven. It would be nothing for him to call me and say a whole bunch of stuff we need to listen to. And we'd go riding around Chickasaw Park, yeah. Victory Park, or, or you know, wherever, um, just listening to new music. And music was his life, something that can't be taken away, even in death. Spiritually, you know, he's been with me all week. He's with me right now. So, um, you know, he may be in a hearse, his, his physical body, but, you know, the rest of him is right here and right here. All right, child, so let's jump into this article. It says, some may not know his name. But most of us R&B lovers know his music. For those of us who recognize his face, it's because we probably remember him as one third of the 90s group Player. They had a few hits in the late 90s, including their 1998 joint Cheers to You. They were signed to Devontae Swing Mob label, alongside Timbaland, Missy Elliott, Genuine, and others. And they also contributed to Jodeci's hit album, The Show, The After Party, The Hotel, pictured here with Lil Wayne in the music video Lollipop. Says he began working very closely with Timbaland on many Timbaland produced hits. Static wrote several hits for Aaliyah, including Are You That Somebody, Try Again, We Need a Resolution, More Than a Woman, and Rock the Boat. He also co wrote Genuine's hit Pony, as well as hits for Dr. Dre's artists. Truth Hurts, including her 2002 DJ Quick Produce smash, Addictive. Static's last major co-written hit shortly before he passed away in 2008 was Lil Wayne's hit single, Lollipop, which Static copped a Grammy Award for. And we all remember Lollipop back in that time when Lil Wayne was blowing up. Now it says, details on his death and who the family blames. Sadly, Static major sudden death on February 25th, 2008, at the age of 33 years old. Y'all already know what's going on, and we've barely gotten into the video. 33 years old, y'all. Now it says, it causes family and friends to reveal the very eerie details surrounding his death and his views prior to his passing. Static passed away after doctors assumed he had a rare condition called myasthenia, gravis, if I pronounce that right which attacks the muscles and causes fatigue. This is the same, um, I think they call it MLS in the show, um, Empire though. Y'all remember when Terrence Howard had that, had that disease in Empire, like in them few beginning seasons, I think this was the same exact thing, which I'm gonna play a little bit of support from his wife as well. But it says, however, it wasn't the actual cause of his death. According to the autopsy report, the death in this case is attrib attributed to complications associated with dialysis and catheter placement. The catheter discussed in the autopsy is in reference to the treatment for the condition called plasmapheresis. Not really sure if I pronounced that right either. Which removes toxins from the blood by inserting a catheter through the neck and into the chest cavity. Since Static Major's death came as a shock to his wife and his three children, his mother, family, and fans. Because according to Avanti, she would call a neurologist saying Stephen should feel better within 24 hours, basically after his procedure. Now, his loved ones also detail some very heart-wrenching factors surrounding his death. According to his wife, mother, and family, Static had a great fear of hospitals after his sister had passed away in one at the age of 22. Static was only 17 years old at the time. He was known to also say hospitals kill people, which he's very right about that. When he became sick from the condition, 
His memory of what happened to his beloved sister has static, incredibly worried in the hospital just before being wheeled into the surgery room. This also goes back to my Bernie Mac video. He was talking about, y'all remember in the show, Martin, bro man, bro man, um, he was talking about how Tommy went into the hospital for like a knee surgery and he ended up dying. And that was it. And, you know, he wanted to talk about more about it, but he couldn't. Remember, that's in my Bernie Mac video, but it just, you know, it just gives a little bit more evidence on how these rituals play out when some of these people that are deeply rooted in the industry go into the hospital and end up dying like the same way with um, the same way with um ah oh man i can't i can't get his um from mob deep prodigy from mob deep same thing what they say like choked on an egg or something while he was in the hospital and died or something like that y'all remember that i got that in the Prod prodigy video as well on the channel so we got multiple cases of people that were deep in the industry dying you know from some kind of random complication when they went into the hospital and for y'all you know that don't know, you know, obviously we've been reading into this article, Static Major was deep into the industry. He worked with some of the biggest artists that, you know, there ever was basically, Aaliyah being one of them, although she died at a very young age, I think at 22 years old or 21 years old. So he, he was deep into the industry, you know? Um, so we can't dismiss what possibly happened to him, you know, for one second, because you know, we haven't even finished the video and really we already know what's going on and it, it gets a little bit more eerie. Right. So it goes to say, I'm not feeling I'm not feeling them messing with my arteries. Stephen told his wife before asking that his wife go home and retrieve some things from a list he prepared. Stephen asked to see his three children holding their then eight year old daughter, Makari, in his lap. He gazed into her eyes and caressed her cheek. Now, the wife says I go out of the room and something tells me to go back in there. So I go back. And they had just pulled the curtain back. And he's looking at me like, this is the last time I'm going to see you. Almost as if he knew. And as he was looking at me, a tear came out of his eye. This is Static Wife telling the story to Vibe Magazine. He actually told her, this is the last time I'm going to see you. That is wild. You know, obviously the spirit, you know, obviously the spirit can tell us when we're about to die. Or, or maybe he knew something even deeper than that. You know, or maybe he had a fear for being in that hospital when he knew he had to be there. It, it wasn't something he could ignore because he would probably, you know, if this was a real condition he had, he would probably die if he didn't get treatment, if he didn't have surgery. But there's a lot of questions here that we'll get into in a little bit after we play the clip of his wife explaining it. You know, whether we believe that she's being completely genuine about everything, you know, so says that was the last time Avanti spoke to Static because just a few hours later, Static's worst fear had come true that he died in the hospital. From what his family believes was malpractice on the part of the doctors involved that had no idea what they were doing, basically. So it says in his hospital bed, after the procedure and after the catheter was pulled from his neck, I don't know if I even pronounced that right, <laughs> he went into convulsions and sadly bled to death. His wife later confirmed that as soon as the catheter was inserted into his neck, Static was telling the doctors that something wasn't right and that he was experiencing a lot of discomfort. His wife has now confirmed that the lawsuit they filed against the hospital, it has since been settled out of court. Now here, we will take this time before we come back and talk a little bit more about his death to jump into the clip of his wife actually explaining this on a talk show. So with that being said, check this out. So during this, uh, doing one of these issues that he that he suffered, I think it was, a, was it a blood disorder? No. It was, yeah, I guess you could say similar. It was an autoimmune disorder. Right. And it was called, well, it was myasthenia gravis. It's what they thought he had. So we, we, you know, at that point, he had only been in the hospital 12 hours. So, you know, it's hard to diagnose somebody right. like in 12 hours, but that's what they thought he had. Right. So the hospital mm. gave him uh, a, a, a treatment or a procedure that they thought would, uh, would help with his illness. And some suspect that that treatment was actually the cause of his death. Well, okay. 
I'll, I'll tell you what happened. Okay. Um, they, they, they were going to do a treatment that's similar to dialysis. That's where the blood comes in. And um, where they would take the blood out and put it back in and clean it. So it's like a blood transfusion or dialysis or whatever. Yeah, it's like, it's like filtering the blood from toxins and anything that, you know, the, the, that the body doesn't need. And the doctor, um, we never got to that point because the, the line that he put in, he put in wrong. So when he threaded it in his vein, he punched holes in his vein. Wow. The doctor did? The doctor did. And right. he actually threaded it in blindly versus using a scope to see where he was going. Wow. So he did it blindly. And mainly, I think, because, you know, I, I assume he was in a hurry because it wasn't supposed to be done till the next morning in the first place. And then all of a sudden, everything was rushed, rushed. The doctor wants to do it now, and, you know, and I'm like, okay. Um, I mean, it just, just everything started happening real fast. It was really weird um, how everything went down. But um, he threaded the line, and then he left the hospital. Mm. Oh, he actually left the hospital. He left okay. with the hospital, and um, when he, my husband started complaining after he put it in, he was like, "Is this supposed to hurt?" Because the whole time he was in the hospital, he was wasn't in any pain. His issues was he had a muscle tone deficiency, where he couldn't swallow. Now, was, this, he, now was, this, was this an ongoing issue? No, it just happened all of a sudden. Okay. All of a sudden, he couldn't swallow, and his eye was drooping. So they thought maybe he had had a stroke and they ruled all that out. He hadn't had a stroke and I guess they did their research and assumed that that was something that it could have possibly been. Which is the same condition as the as the father on um, Empire had. Um, turns out. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Yeah, it turns out. Yeah, you remember <laughs> the, the first season he had this sickness. Right. And it was myasthenia gravis. It's a rare sickness. Okay. Yeah. And so it just so happened that that's what they picked for so him. So up to this point, wow. no signs of illness? No pain. No, no pain, pain. No pain. No pain. And this was what, 33 and years old? 33 years old. Okay. And uh, he, he, you know, he was like, is this supposed to hurt? You know, something's right. not right. <coughs> so, you know, his, you know, his mother called the nurse then, and the nurse said, I'm going to call the doctor. She called the doctor, and the doctor told her to pull it. He's going to take him to surgery in the morning and do it right, which was so dumb of him. And of, I think of her, too, well, to pull, because to pull, if you don't know, line. yeah, to pull okay. the line, because really, honestly, if you don't know the risk of pulling a, a newly placed line, you shouldn't pull it. Right. Because usually when you pull those lines, they've already been placed for a period of time, mm -hmm. you know, but you having a problem with a newly placed line. So something's going on. So what was going on? She pulled the line. She came in and she pulled the line, and he had put he had perforated his vein. He had put holes in his vein. The, so the, it, the position the, that that, the, that that threaded it in. So what was going on is it was leaking right. blood, wow. and he could feel it, and it was filling up in his chest. And instead of them checking the X-ray before they pulled it, because on the X-ray clearly showed that it's bleeding. Right. So nobody checked the X-ray. And the nurse went in there, la, 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 you know, I'm going to pull this line. And she pulled the line. And when she pulled the line, she panicked. Wow. You know, and he's like trying to, you know, to he's, he's dying. You know what I'm saying? He's just like, and she's calling his name. Steven, talk to me. Steven, Steven, talk to me. And, you know, it took for his mother to run out in the hallway. It's like, something's wrong with my son. So another nurse ended up coming in and was like, oh, hold on, wait, we need to call a code. So it took them like 10 minutes to call a code once they pulled the line out. So, so basically his body probably filled up. His lungs filled up. His lungs. Yes, yes, because this is wow. like a tire. You, you know how you take yeah. a nail out of the tire. Once you take a nail out of the tire, it was just over. Right. So it just, you know, filled his lungs up and then oxygen wasn't going to his brain. And then heart, it just went from one thing to another. And this, you, you got to think about that, you know, this is a majority, you know, this is a good old boy state. Somebody call somebody, keep this under so, yeah, wraps. Yeah, we're keeping this under wraps. And yeah. then they convinced me to keep it under wraps, you know. And they convinced me to keep it under wraps, you know. We don't want you talking about it. Because, but because it, it was all my, everybody was in cahoots. Right. All right, y'all. 
Now, we could almost sit here for days and talk about everything that went wrong when Static Major was in the hospital and they were preparing him for surgery. So you heard it right out of his wife's mouth. You know, she said the surgery was actually supposed to be done the next morning. But then out of nowhere, the nurses and stuff started rushing her, saying that the doctor wanted to go ahead and get it done right then and there. Now, it could have been that, you know, maybe they saw something and said, you know, instead of waiting until tomorrow morning, let's get it done to increase his chances of being more healthy, whatever you want to say. But for a doctor to go in and not use a microscope to basically poke through his veins, she said that he went in blindly as if, you know, he just knew what he was doing. So there, you know, from the story she told us in the article that we read, you know, she she pretty much told us exactly how she told it to the article. There were plenty, plenty reasons to believe that it was he was definitely murdered. You know, um, that's just along the lines of how he supposedly died in the hospital. You know, then we have to go into the fact that he died exactly 16 days before Lollipop was released to the world, the video, if I'm not mistaken. Um, actually, not sure if it was the video or the song that was released on the 13th. Not sure if they released them together or not, like as in the video and the song. Can't remember. But it was 16 days before that day. Lollipop dropped March 13th, 2008. Static Major died February 25th, 2008, at 33 years old. That raises another question, rather we believe that he was a sacrifice for Lil Wayne because, like I said earlier in the video, that was Wayne's, you know, crossover into a new market, basically. You know, like a really huge commercial hit, not just something that rap fans would want to listen to. You know, it was kind of like a crossover to introduce him to a, a new fan base as well, because it was something that everyone, like everyone enjoyed that song. Everyone loved Lollipop. And we all know you have to pay the price when it comes to certain levels of fame in the industry. Wayne was 25 at that time. Static was 33. Now, I believe the 25th was on a Monday when he died. But him dying at the age of 33 gives us, gives us the proof that we need to know on him being a ritual sacrifice. And the, the most eerie part about it all was that he told his wife, this is the last time I'm going to see you. Now, unfortunately, I don't have anything from Static himself, you know, talking about the industry or anything like that. But I'm pretty sure he knew things of, you know, how dark the industry got. I'm pretty sure he knows how Aaliyah died. And then um, Aaliyah's makeover artist, he died just a few years ago. So like two of some of the closest people that were around Aaliyah when she was blowing up are now dead. So someone as deep as Static Major was in the industry, they know what's going on. They may not expect certain things to happen to them or for them to be, you know, ritually sacrificed, but they know about the industry. They know how dark and evil it gets. And there's no coincidence. It just lines up too perfect for this not to be what we think, you know, him dying just 16 days before Lollipop dropped on the 13th of the month. Wayne's, you know, damn near one of his biggest commercial hits. I think that was the same year he dropped. Um, uh, what's the other, what's the name of that track? Um, it was that, uh. It was a song where he had Corey Guns on that track too. I forget the name of it. But it was it was damn near just as big as Lollipop. So Wayne, you know, Wayne basically had a huge, a huge year in 2008. And um, if I'm not mistaken, I think the Carter Three dropped in 2008. I can't remember. I didn't I didn't quite exactly look that up, but he had a huge year. And 
this may have been his payment, his price for fame. Now, um, I'm not going to lie. I never looked deep into Static Major, and I never looked deep into this situation. I remember, you know, when this all happened, um, you know, but at that time, obviously, I was I was too young to think like, oh, this was a ritual. This was a sacrifice. You know, it just it didn't you know, it, it didn't make sense at that time. But now going back and looking at how old he was and looking at the details, especially on how he died, like I couldn't imagine being in the hospital and you got a doctor who got evil intentions behind you know, your surgery, you never know what could happen. You already have a fear of being killed in the hospital. Your sister was killed in the hospital. I couldn't imagine going out that way. The man laid there and bled to death. Blood filling up his lungs, no oxygen to his brain. I couldn't imagine going out that way at 33 years old. All for nothing. Participation in this dark, evil industry that we know to be in Hollywood. It's crazy, y'all. It's crazy. This one, um, this one, it's crazy. It was crazy to hear that, to hear that story being explained that way from his wife. A lot of the comments, a lot of the comments under that video, you know, they, they believe that his wife might have had something to do with it as well because they settled out in court for an undisclosed amount. Um, I don't I never saw anything on how much was settled out, but in the interview, she went on to actually say that they wanted her to keep her mouth shut. They were trying to keep it under wraps, as in the people from the hospital. Like, this is what she said, that they told her they wanted to keep it quiet and that she should hurry up and settle it out because, you know, a judge seeing her by her skin color, this and that, they weren't going to pay her that much anyway. That That's what she said. It's what his wife said. So overall, you know, it's a crazy story. Um, it's even more crazy to have to die that way, you know. Um, but yeah, y'all, that that was a static major video. Glad I got to that video. Something just, I actually don't even know how I came across it. I think I was watching something and they said something about static major. And then, boom, it hit me to start researching his death. And I found all of this stuff and I'm glad. I was able to do this video, you know, kind of go back down the lane with all these old 90s pictures. You know, it's a kind of nostalgic video in a sense. Um, but yeah, man, y'all already know what's going on. I hope y'all enjoyed that video. Hope y'all had a good weekend. Y'all already know, man. Give me y'all suggestions on what y'all want me to do next. I'll either have this or that... Um, that Shia LaBeouf, Britney Spears video coming out. I think I'm going to drop this one first as long as YouTube don't try to flag this video. Hopefully I can get this video out on Sunday. So with that being said, it's Black Balloon, and I'm going to see y'all soon. I'm out.